Is it really gonna piss him off? <laughs> it is go time. What's up, it's Casey from Casey's Customs, and as you can see from the title of this video, it is the best of 2022. We had a ton of laughs this year, gained a bunch of new followers, did a lot of views, and we built some really cool cars. Uh, the very first build that I finished in 2022 was the 51 Chevy, under $3,500 project. It's chassis swapped, it's bagged, it's turboed, it's just a little bit of everything, and we just got crazier and crazier from there. I was going through the videos to see what we were gonna add to this, and it looks like we had eight cars that got built this year. I mean, that's crazy to do eight cars in 12 months. Now, some of them are a lot more extreme than the others, but still, just to have that many on the channel is wild. And obviously we can't add every single one on here. So these are just some of my favorite builds and the wrap ups of the build. And also the lace roof is one of my favorite videos. So that's in here too. So do me a favor while you're watching, comment below what your favorite part of 2022 was and let me know. Let me know if there's something we should be doing in 2023. I took advice from everybody. I wasn't sure if I was gonna build this C10. I made a video on it a couple weeks ago. I had everybody telling me it's time to build it and look at it, here we are doing it. So enough talking, let's get to the video. I really want to dig into this 51 Chevy, but I don't really want to go crazy on it until I figure out what the donor car is going to be. Then I can start cutting up the donor car and put it on top. I've been looking for like a Blazer S10 truck, something like that. I'm having a hard time finding them. Um, they're just, they're hard to find lately, except for that one I just bought today. It was actually kind of easy to find. Picked it up, 99 GMC, really nice, really solid, zero rust. These two are gonna make sweet love, and uh, they're gonna make a cool ass baby. So, let's start cutting some shit up, baby. Walk through, front seat's a little crappy, but really nice, I think it was 160,000 mile, pretty good. These four threes have issues with the distributor cap. He has put a bunch of money in this too. I think he said he spent over a thousand dollars in parts trying to fix stuff. He never fixed the one thing that I thought was the issue, so I might be able to go through it. Runs and drives occasionally, but sometimes he'll turn the key on and he has nothing. Let's figure out why she's not running right first. Got a lot of corrosion in there. That's probably my issue. And I got a rusty rotor. These aren't great. I could sand both of these down and reuse them, but these are usually like 15, 20 bucks a piece. It's great that I'm a, such a small, skinny fella, because getting my hands back here is super easy. I tell you what, if I was, oh, I don't know, 6'2", 250, this would be a pain in the ass, but luckily I'm a little bitty guy. I'm gonna hit the button and hopefully we get lucky. We got gas, we got charging, we got oil. Let's see what happens. I have not drove this yet, obviously. Oh, brakes are good. Brakes are real good. Why is the seat up so high? Oh, yeah. Oh, she got some shit to her, bud. Awesome. This is going to work perfect for our donor chassis, man. I wonder why the ABS light is on. I don't know. Oh, yeah. But before I hook the battery back up, I need to go through here and cap all these off because when you cut them like that, they can run into each other and then you'll just start popping fuses left and right. So throwing the battery in right now and we will turn the key and see what happens. Hopefully I don't have any, you know, loose ends anywhere.
Oh, okay, it was just the tripod. <laughs> you can kind of see the vision. Motherfucker's way too tall. We're gonna have to fix that for sure. The Chevy is now in the shop. We can start cutting this one now. I need to obviously strip all that. I don't need any of that. I just need the body. But let's get to stripping, baby. Got most of the front clip off. Still got a little bit of stuff to do, but it is currently two in the morning on a Monday. So I need to get my ass to bed because I got to get up and do all this shit again. I'll lube all these bad boys up, but they almost never come undone. I mean, it's very rare. Extremely annoying shift later. There is a foot of dirt in the muck. I'm not even close to being done and look at the pile of shit. Ugh. There is literally a foot of dirt in there. Gross. I got that thing's completely full. And I'm crawling in there doing stuff and it's just still so disgusting. And there's just dirt everywhere and it smells really bad. So we're gonna hose this thing off for a little bit. Finally, got her all cleaned out. So much shit underneath it, it's ridiculous. I'm gonna push it back in. Definitely not great. The funny thing is, there was like a foot of soil. I've probably said that 20 times by now. The foot of dirt and shit was on this side, but that side rotted out, so that's kind of silly. I would have thought that would have been the other way around, but as you can see, this, this floor is about gone. It's so bad, I'm not even gonna bother cutting it out first. Normally I would do the floor first, but I think what I'm gonna do, since that's almost all gone, I actually gonna come in here and cut the cowl, because we're gonna cut this off to use the S10 firewall. Everything should be unbolted. I'm gonna probably pick the body up now. I should be good. We gotta go borrow my neighbor's hoist. He has a giant hoist I use on all my body swaps. Grab it, right at the post, pull it up, and uh, hopefully when we pull it up, the uh, frame doesn't come with it, but we'll see. So, we got the hoist. This is a giant A-frame hoist. My neighbor actually used it because he works on tractors and stuff. It's super hard to pick up a body without one of these. You can kind of do it with an engine hoist, but it's a real pain in the ass. So I'm happy to have this bad boy back. We're gonna push this out, hook the chains around the post and uh, pick up and hopefully nothing's still attached, but we'll see real fast. Okay, got them cut. I completely forgot the bumper brackets actually go through the body on the back of these. I actually knew that, but I just forgot about it, I guess, or maybe I was being lazy. But got those cut out. We should be good now. Let's find out real quick. Uh, that's never happened. So that's interesting. Uh, the chain fell off. It probably did a bunch of damage, which is cool. But it's all right. Uh, it's fun. We gotta try and fix it now, obviously, though. 
So what I'm worried about when I lift it, I think it's gonna spin around and probably hit me. So I gotta make sure I turn the camera on. I make sure it's not on time lapse too. That way if I get hurt, at least we get some content out of it. news is nothing broke nothing's really bad at all this is already dented so i'm cool there something i don't like is how badly balanced it is i don't really have anywhere else to put my chains either so we got to figure something out the only damage from the chain falling off was actually just a little bit of a dent in the rear quarter nothing that can't be fixed very easily she's ready to get a bunch of shit cut out of her at the bottom now i forgot the gas tank bolts to the uh floor too so i still got gas tank kind of hanging out back there finally got it in the shop kind of like barely hanging on here <laughs> it's not in great shape but one of my bars that was holding it up slipped but it's not going anywhere it has a dolly underneath it i'm gonna probably raise it back up get underneath it and then just cut all the floor out and then we'll get some measurements to see how wide we need to be okay so we're back on the blazer got all my four link stuff all my airbag stuff it all came in i got a triangled four link i think i might have to tweak that to work around the stock gas tank but that's no big deal we can do it if we have to this frame stuck out too far we need to bob this frame like six inches so i'm going to probably do that before i start on the four link stuff just to get it taken care of Got the muffler out. It seems clogged. It's way too heavy. Oh, wait. Oh, I thought it was blown out, but that's just a, that's meant there. Uh, so what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to cut that flange off and I'll end up making my own. This obviously wouldn't work with airbags anyway. Another thing I did, I went ahead and got my rear end mocked up where I want it. Six inches longer than stock. We got to cut this guy and probably put it right there somewhere. It was hitting the back of the tail pan on the 51. The back frame was back here and it was caused that to push out. So it's got to be moved. I'm going to put my mask on and get all this old rusty, dirty bullshit. I think he lived on a gravel road and the gravel dust has just grabbed everything. So I'm going to go in here and get some of this cleaned up in bare metal before I start cutting stuff. Time to mark this frame. I found just a piece of scrap metal, just about the length I want it. We'll see how the grinder goes first. Got it welded. I couldn't get the bottom part welded because this is in the way. Got everything cut out, got everything smoothed up, got everything welded. So that's pretty low. <laughs> I think that'll work. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna have to see notch it. Trying to figure out how I wanna do these airbags. The kit I bought is bag on uh, axle, or I usually like to run the bags behind the axle, um, just cause you have more room back here. Take these brackets here and have them tied into the frame like this we might uh we might just leave the kit we got and figure it out the next thing i need to do i need to just take all the brake lines off i was going to try and bend them around but it, it's they're just in the way so i just need to take all that off grind it all down to bare metal so we can start tack welding shit everything is stripped ready for welding Probably go ahead and tack the brackets in and start figuring out how we're going to do our upper mounts. My bag compressed. I know whenever there's weight on this now, this is exactly where everything will set. I got everything dead level. I got my pinion angle three degrees up, which is perfect for my drive shaft angle. And I'm ready to go ahead and tack this one in place. And then I can go ahead and tack this. This is gonna be my new frame essentially. I can go ahead and tack this in place too. 
and then and we'll start building this so that it's completely boxed in. There's another piece here and then all the sides. Bada bing. That's how you do it, baby. So now uh, we have to do all that on the other side. Now, if you watch closely when it went up, it kind of did this. Well, that's because I don't have my links in yet. There's really nothing to hold it square. This airbag stuff was not cheap. It wasn't as expensive as I thought it was going to be, but it's not cheap. I usually buy top of the line stuff. Well, mid-tier stuff. This one, I went on the cheaper route to save money for the budget, and it, uh, it was a little more affordable than I expected. And just throw it right there where it lands right in place like this. Airbags are easy, man. You just gotta throw some shit at some shit. Two hours later. The 51 is as cut as it needs to be. Well, that's a little excessive. Probably didn't need to do all that. Let's throw the body back on and uh, maybe see if we can't kind of figure out how the front end's gonna go on this damn thing. Got it pretty close about where it's gonna sit. <laughs> So as you can see, I mean, it just fits absolutely perfectly. I mean, <laughs> fucking mint with the door gap. That won't let that sit down. So we might get lucky and be able to keep our battery there, but this core support definitely has to go out of the way. Uh, I might just be able to hit that with a hammer. I don't know. Yeah, it should be fine. You want to gently place this on the ground. There you go. We got our cuts sitting a lot better. I'm going to go ahead and just pull it so I can finish welding all of this rear airbag system. Okay, we got her back in here, got the body back over there. Everything is welded. We ended up having four full hours in welding. Check it out. It's actually sitting on the frame. Um, it's crooked and none of the mounts are done. They're just kind of sitting there. Let's update the budget, uh, but we're adding it right now. Here's where we're at. A lot of airbag parts were bought, spent a ton of money. Uh, total spent so far, 2084. This is what I've sold. The blazer parts, the fastback frame and motor, and then just basically a little bit of scrap since I've sold those. Took the hood off, took the front clip off so that I could start on my turbo. I got a lot of the piping in, not all of it, but I got a lot of it in so we can start figuring stuff out. I looked at it, it was the other way around, but I looked at it to clock it and I was like, well, that's not gonna help me much, but I didn't even check on this side. This way it actually helps a lot. I should still have the video of this, but we did clock it and got it turned down. Stop being a bitch. So I still have kind of a funky bend, but it's not nearly as funky as it was. So I got it jacked up so we can kind of figure out our exhaust situation. 
over there. But for now, I'm going to work on my intake. I got my mass airflow sensor on, and I'm trying to figure out how I want to do this. I think I'm going to go down with it. I think we have our intake kind of figured out using some handy dandy masking tape because I don't have a coupler for this yet. It's all coming in the mail though, so it should be here soon, but I think I got this figured out. Maybe not. Got it all connected. Some more handy dandy masking tape. Got to get another coupler. The funny thing, like these silicone couplers are like $5. I mean, they're nothing. Turbo exhaust is completely done. The intake side is also completely done, which is great. Uh, and yes, I was drinking red Kool-Aid. So, I don't know, I felt like telling you, I guess you can see it on camera. I figured I might as well say something. Now, the passenger side is connected to the driver's side. It goes down, around this way, around to the driver's side. Can't find my marker, screw it. Best thing about the planishing hammer is how quiet and soothing it is. I mean, I can just fall asleep working with this thing. Okay, got the pieces made on the hood. Still needs a lot of welding and a lot of fitting and I need to make a little cut there and file to get it to fit better, but the shape is perfect. I didn't grab shit. Oh, the ground on it. <laughs> yeah, I might. <laughs> I might need to put a little tack weld there. It takes a little screw you can put it in. Well, I never took the screw out. Oh shit, there God, is. what is going on? All right, hold on. My hood fits absolutely horrible, <laughs> which I was kind of expecting. I technically pancaked the roof about two inches. If you look at it, see it's not as bulbous, which I like. My brake lines need lengthened because we stretched this frame eight inches or whatever it was. Also, we have airbags now, so we got to kind of tweak how our brakes work. Obviously, we need to have a, a rubber line in there somewhere since it moves now. Bunch of stuff. But All of the fuel line stuff done. Also had to make a new ground for, I still don't remember what the hell that thing's called, vacuum box something. All the vents are done, all the lines are done. Everything is good there. Um, I have, I'm gonna start with my brake lines now. Also, I got this hidden kind of over here in the door. Kind of ugly, but you'll never see it because we're gonna have our bars of our floor go across there. Plenty of room. You can see where the, you know, like the back seat would still be here. So whenever we stretch the frame, we actually have gained some room. So I think that'll be a little bit easier to do. And we'll just probably run. I don't know what I'm gonna do for seats yet. I don't have any idea. We are moving and shaking today uh, on this sheet metal work. I'm moving and shaking. I just about started dancing right then. Ooh, ooh, I will. Don't make me, don't make me post a dance video. Okay, so I got most of the floor structure done as far as all the framing and whatnot. It looks like a set of monkey bars right now, but it's actually exactly how I want it. I'm very excited. Check it out. Oh yeah, baby. 
got her all buttoned up. Doesn't look half bad if I say so myself. I tried to weld this with my little aluminum welding rods. My torch is a piece of crap. It can't get this hot enough. I'm trying to use a little torch, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, I just went ahead and used some uh, JB weld. That's fine. You're not gonna see it. I'm not super happy about it, but I can't mess with it anymore. I've wasted entirely too much time on a piece of shit coolant tank. Check it out. It actually looks badass. <laughs> it looks a lot better than I thought it was going to. Check it out. Got the filler neck all done. Went ahead and got my brakes all finished up. Got the fuel pump put in. Oh, everything's hooked up there. I know it's kind of dark in here, sorry. I got the wiring that went to the back. I got that all fed through there. All that's done, fuel pump's hooked up. I want to make sure my fuel pump has power because I don't think I'm hearing power right now. I tried to put gas in it, but I only had like a gallon, so I don't even think it's registered. I'm not happy that I'm not hearing the fuel pump. Yeah. Oh no, get the back! There's already stuff falling. Look, there's already chunks of shit falling out. Okay. Don't see any leaks. That's good. I spilled oil on the manifold. That's what it is. Oh, should we we should really should not do that. We're still testing stuff out. That would be very stupid. Oh we built boost! Oh did you hear the turbo? This is gonna be a fun car. Time to get sexy, baby! Primer is all sanded, and now I'm gonna start laying out where my lace is gonna be. See how that rusty brown is starting to come through a little bit? Actually, let me do this. There you go, you can see that better. See that? Doesn't that kind of look like these spots?
Time to untape it. It's been about, I don't know, six or eight hours since we painted it. We're gonna go ahead and get it untaped now. Absolutely perfect. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Damn! It looks so good. I don't know what's showing up on camera and what's not. <laughs> What is smoking? I got a uh, manifold smoking. Ugh. All right, let's get some gas. First trip to the gas station is a success. Don't see any leaks just yet. I'm in people's way now. First time on the highway. Always nerve wracking. <laughs> Doesn't matter how many times you do this, it's always nerve wracking, especially when you need shocks. You bumpy bitch. Nobody's coming. Let's go. All right. Let's see what happens. I don't know if the GoPro picked up me losing a hubcap, but that was hilarious. Funny story number two, told my wife I was gonna be gone 20 minutes. I was gone an hour and a half. She is gonna kick my ass. I really don't wanna go home, but I got to. But yeah, if this is the last video ever, I love you all and thanks for the support. It's not gonna be good. It's not gonna be good. On the ground and we have shocks. I need to tweak them a little bit. They're kind of janky. I don't want to listen to that very badly. They're kind of janky uh, the way I got them mounted. They're going to be fine for now, but I'll tweak them at some point in the future. So that 450 helped a bunch. We added it to the other stuff we've sold and scrapped. And now our total sold is $817, which is just awesome. We did add a bunch of stuff to the paint. I had a bunch of people asking why didn't I add the paint and the pinstriping to the bot category. I just didn't have time, so we're doing it now. Paint materials was about 75 bucks. To be completely honest, I probably had more like $10 in it. We just have a lot of stuff laying around. Went ahead and figured 75 bucks. Pinstriping was $100. That was discounted a lot. Uh, Von Mex pinstriping, he... He basically did that for half price just for the cloud, so I could kind of, you know, give him some shout-outs, get his brand out there a little bit more. Lens for the parking lights. I have parking lights coming for my grill. Oh, tail lights were 54. Cardboard panel for the door panels was 92. Leather was 39.89. Spray glue. And then the seats were 20 bucks. The last video I went over those. I don't even think I'm going to use these. But they're technically in there now, but most likely I'm just going to get rid of those and get my 20 bucks back because I have a couple people that want them. But either way, we'll go ahead and add them now. 4120 is what we have spent. 817 is what we have sold for a grand total of 3303 All right, let's start putting these door panels in. Oh, I need to pop the hood. Okay, no more filming bullshit. 
I got oil on my manifold. That's all it is, I think. Do you hear that? There's no way that's from me. <laughs> There's no way that's from me. I, I only did, I was only there for like two minutes. Oh my God. <gasps> Yo, they just stopped. Oh shit. Okay, we're gonna close the garage for a little bit. It is time to finish the 1951 Chevy. Check it out. Trunk is looking pretty damn good. I went ahead and shot black paint on whatever I couldn't get carpet on, basically those pillars. I'm pretty happy with how this came out considering I suck at doing interior. Looks pretty bitchin'. <laughs> Ooh, now I'm getting cocky because that looks really good. That I do not love as much, but it's all right. I mean, for now, I don't give a shit. I am happy to have it sealed up. I got wiring and stuff running there that I didn't love. I was kind of worried it was going to get kicked or something. So it's all right for now. Let's not pretend that doesn't look hacky as shit. <laughs> but the good news is the headliner material is basically just pure foam. It has no like carpet to it like this does. So whatever you put over the top of it will actually work great. It'll just kind of work like an insulator below it. Got this done. It doesn't look as bad as I thought it did. I was... Really not happy with it last night, but I don't hate it. It's definitely not that big of a deal. Check it out. Got the rear panels all carpeted. Looks pretty good. Super happy with it. I just added it up, very excited. I went through everything again just to double check stuff. Took me about an hour to get online and make sure everything I've bought. Bought 4258, sold 817 for a total of 3441.41. So we did it. <laughs> Well, I didn't really get enough video for it. Are you dead? What are those? <laughs> hey, 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 hey. I'm an idiot. He said he was going to do it. I didn't think he meant today. God damn it. So he told me he was going to steal the wheels back. So I've made sure that this has stayed inside. And also, I've been hiding the airbag remote so he can't jack it up to steal them, but I never thought about the wheels in the 54. Oh, that's upsetting. I, I, it was even my idea. I told him, I said, bring your truck down so we can get video for it and we'll see if people want to do the giveaway. We are back on the 65 Mustang because I just bought a 2010 Mustang. Let's check it out. Then we're going to cut it up. Listen, you two are going to make a baby. It's going to be beautiful. You're going to be on top. You're going to be on bottom. It's going to get messy in the middle, but it should look great in the end. <laughs> All right, let's check this out. It's not too bad. It definitely needs a good cleaning. I got it super cheap. It is actually a six cylinder, which is not what I wanted, but we're gonna go ahead and coyote swap it. I've been looking for over two months for a coyote Mustang and I haven't been finding any other than a couple for 15 or 16 grand and I just can't see doing that. I got this one for 2,500, which is awesome. I think we're gonna uh, have some fun with it. What I really needed more than anything was I need the body because this project is two months old and I haven't touched it in the last six weeks because I just, I need something to build on. I can't do anything with just a bare body. So I really needed a chassis to get going. And I'm so excited that we finally have one so we can start playing with it. Also, fun fact, this is the six cylinder. I'm not using any of this, but this thing runs great. It's got like 200K on it, but uh, it runs like a bat out of hell. I've, I'm really impressed with this six cylinder. It's got a lot more shit than my six cylinder in my truck, the Chevy 4.3. I think this is a 4.0, but it has some shit to it. Super, super exciting. It's kind of beat up, so I don't know how many parts I'm going to try and save, but I'll probably try and save like the front clip, maybe the doors if somebody needs them. But uh, other than that, the roof and stuff, we'll just cut it all to hell. Let's get going. Okay, so I got the garage all cleaned out. I'm ready to pull the Mustang in, but I think we should tear it up a little bit before I start taking it apart. So let's do a burnout and maybe blow the motor up. <laughs> all right, let's have some fun. Oh, 
shit. Look at the wind ticket. Whoa. Holy shit. <coughs> Damn. <coughs> Holy shit. Look, we started ripping up both tires real quick. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. <laughs> Oh, so naturally we had to have some fun with it. Uh, I painted on the tent for TikTok and Instagram and we really had a good reaction. Here's those videos here. Okay, so some of you guys were talking about how I wasn't spraying right with these turbo cans. Well, let me show you. I just got this brand new Mustang and I want to tint the windows. It looks a lot better when you use black paint and it's a lot cheaper than tint. So people were mad that I wasn't holding it down. What I like to do when I paint it is I spray it and then I let up and then spray again. Some people said you just need to hold down the whole time, so I'm gonna try that, but I feel like that would make a run, but I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, let's see. You see, I don't I don't know if that looks as good as like the coats like this. Here, we'll, we'll tint the back window too. See, I feel like it looks better. See, if you just hold it down and then go back like, like that, if you just hold it down, you get these runs everywhere. I think I'm right, I think you just kinda Kind of just do coats like that, you know? Kind of like that. I don't know. I, I think I'm right, but. So Chris Fix It watched our video. Didn't seem like he was very happy with how I spray painted the tent on my windows. I was racking my brain. I could not understand what the problem was. I watched some of his videos and I figured it out. We did not prep this the way we should have. I want to do a windshield banner, but this time we're going to prep it right before we paint. With some 80 grit on a DA. <laughs> All right, now we really got it prepped. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Damn! That looks sick! Oh, yeah, man. I want to go a little bit lower than I had it. Kind of like that. <laughs> Look on the inside. Oh! Oh, I love it! Thanks, Chris. The prep really helped. Love you, man. But th that was great. A lot of people were very confused, which is what I was going for. A lot of fun, but we've had enough fun with it. Now it's time to get down to business. Let's start taking it apart. I think I'm gonna take the front clip off, then I'll probably work on the doors. And I believe the trunk lock is broke. So I'm gonna have to actually crawl through <laughs> to get the trunk open and then we'll move back here. But I'm gonna start on the front and this is gonna take several hours to disassemble. So we're gonna put it on time-lapse. This is always my favorite part about taking a car apart. Check this out. Oh, it didn't fall off. Well, it kind of fell. <laughs> All right, let's try it again. This should work this time. I'm getting out of the way because these doors are not light. <laughs> ah, I love it. <laughs> Front clip is off. Doors are off. It is time to work on the back. I wanna get the bumper, the taillights, and the trunk. And like I said earlier, I have to climb through to open it up. I'm not very excited about it at all. But the goal for today is get all this stripped, and then tomorrow we'll come in here with the Sawzall and whick, give her the old cut. But I gotta do some crawling. <laughs> So I basically got everything taken off that I can take off. What we need to do now is start cutting stuff. But what I want to do before I cut anything is take some measurements and see what we have to do. The newer bodies are almost always a lot wider than the older bodies. So most likely we're going to come in here and just cut all this off. Basically just leave the floor and then put the body on top. But in certain cases, I think mostly when the guys do like a Dodge um, chassis swap, they can actually get away with just kind of cutting the 
newer sheet metal off, leaving the kind of interior skeleton, whatever you want to call it, and then grafting the old body on top. I'm 99% sure that is not the case on one of these Mustangs, but we're gonna go ahead and take some measurements, see where we need to be before we start cutting stuff up. So let's do that. Okay, we have it inside to inside, mm, probably 54 because I have that actually overlapping a little bit. So call it 54. I'm 99% sure this one is 56, if I remember right, from what I looked at online, but let's see. Ooh, this is hard to do one-handed. <laughs> yeah, looks like, oh, about 55, maybe a little bit less, but um, it's a lot closer than I thought it was, which is awesome, but we'll still probably go ahead and cut way down here, um, get rid of all this. I could technically try and keep the interior trim. I'm not going to. I'll go ahead and cut this. We'll be able to use the rear seat, but we'll probably have to have new rear panels, which is cool because with the Holly partnership, they actually have those rear panels for uh, reproduction, so which is awesome. But uh, yeah, that's basically what I needed to assume. I, I, I didn't realize it was that close. <laughs> I didn't realize it was within an inch. I assumed it was within six inches, not within an inch. That's pretty cool. We still need to basically go cut here. Probably have to shave all of this down in here, kind of like I do on all of my builds. The good news is we can get really wide with our fenders and our flares, so we shouldn't have to go too crazy with cutting in any of that. We need to break out the Sawzall and uh, have some fun. I think I'm gonna probably go ahead and take these panels off and then probably take these panels off, just so it'll be a lot easier when I cut in it. It's toward the end of the day, so I'm not going to work much longer, but I think I would like to have that done. And then tomorrow we can come in here with our sawzalls and just go crazy. Check it out. We are good now for cutting. Really excited. I should probably break the windows, but I don't know if I'm going to. I might just do it tomorrow. Ah, changed my mind. Let's do it. Okay. Wow, I think the paint actually held it together. <laughs> Holy shit! What? Oh my god, that was awesome! Alright, round two. I cannot believe that happened. There we go. The paint actually kind of holds it together. That's crazy. Also, if anybody is wondering why you break the glass because I can't save it. I also don't want to sell used glass. You could have a glass company come out and have them, they could take it out, but I mean, used glass is just worth nothing. The reason you break it is because whenever you're using a Sawzall, it just shakes the hell out of everything. And one of the first ones I ever did 15 years ago, I was cutting way back here and the shaking of it broke the glass and basically my head was like right here. I just got shattered glass all over me. Now, I always work, I've always worked basically with a full respirator and shield, but I mean, if I wouldn't have had that on, I would have had thousands of pieces of the glass on me, in my eyes, everywhere. So now I just break them all. I don't break the windshield because it stays together. You can actually run a Sawzall blade right along the bottom of it and actually cut the glass like you would cut a piece of metal. Works just fine. But the back, as soon as anything touches it, or if it shakes too much, or if you're just vibrating, you know, anywhere near it, you'll just it'll just pop like a balloon. And obviously you don't want glass all over you. So that's why I always do this. Some people will go, well, why couldn't you sell it? I mean, maybe if I got these out, it would cost me a couple hundred bucks to get them taken out. And then I might be able to make a couple hundred bucks back. But I mean, it's just not, it's not worth it. So if we were doing a really tight budget, maybe we'd talk about it, but this one doesn't really have a budget. So I'm gonna come back tomorrow and cut the living hell out of this. Peace. The next day. Okay, I got some of my glass cleaned up, so it shouldn't be a problem whenever we go to cut. I got some brand new Sawzall blades. It is the next day. We are ready to tackle this. I think my first cut, I'm just going to go right across here, right across here, and then the front of the windshield. That way we can get the bulk of the roof out of the way. Whenever I cut it, I want to see if anything moves. Now, this is a unit body, but usually the frames on them, the frames on them are beefy enough. It won't come in on itself. But if I cut this and it seems like anything is pulling in, I'll go ahead and weld a brace down here. Well, it looks like they got a pretty damn good brace in there already that goes all the way across. But just in case we have any 
super flex all uh weld a pipe in there kind of hold it together but usually these new ones are built pretty dang good you don't have to but this is a unibody so we got to just kind of keep in mind whenever we start cutting it if you cut it and something jumps you know a half an inch you obviously need to pull it back and get a brace in there but i think we're okay let's cut some shit Check this out. This is a great thing to see on a unibody car. Look, this is actually all loose. It's hard to do one-handed. It's loose. It's literally exactly where it needs to be still. So that means we have nothing in a bind. It's obviously not super dependent on having a roof or not. I was told these weren't, but it's always, you know, you always want to check. I, I did a chassis swap on a Lexus years ago, and when I cut the roof off, it just jumped in like four inches. So very, very happy that that's that way. I got the front post cut, but I don't have the windshield broke. So we need to go in here, break the windshield out. It's never fun. It's always a messy pain in the ass, but it's really the only way to do it. We're going to do that now, and then I'm just going to throw this whole roof over here on the floor and then we'll have a scrapper pick it up. All right, let's try this again. She is a convertible. I am very impressed with how well braced it is here on the bottom. It doesn't have much up here at all. I mean, these that's that's pretty thick. I take that back. But she's got a lot of structure as a convertible. There was almost nothing back here. Sweet. What I'm going to do now is I want to get the rest of the windshield out, which really, really sucks. You got to go in here with an air chisel, chisel out that glue. It's a pain in the butt. You get glass everywhere. I put so much extra protective stuff on because I don't want glass in my face and whatnot. But, uh, I want to get that done, and then I think I'll come in here and start shaving these down a little bit more, and then we will tackle where we are going to cut these quarters. I'm not sure yet. Most likely, probably all the way down here. All the way down here. I would definitely want to keep this, so I'll probably cut around it and then try and get this whole quarter off. I also want to leave the package tray because i want to reuse it i want to reuse the rear seat and the package tray the way it is i think it looks perfect and uh yeah let's keep cutting baby Check it out. We got everything cut up. I got all of the glass cleaned up. That took a lot longer than I thought it was going to. The back window had actually already been broke out before they put a new one in, and they did not get it completely cleaned out. So the trunk, it, I mean, it was like just four inches of glass in the trunk. Took a really long time, but I got it all vacuumed. I'm going to do some more cutting, and I'll probably blow it all out and vacuum again. You, you obviously just don't want any little piece of glass to fly in your eye when you're driving or something crazy. But I'm very happy I got it cleaned up. It was a real hectic mess. It always is. Just kind of part of the fun. But, uh, yeah, I got all that cleaned up. Very, very happy where it's at. Now I'm going to start cutting the living hell, I think, out of this quarter panel. I think I'm going to start on it first. I'm going to probably take my air chisel and just run it along the edge, pull this off, and then we can kind of look at how the interior structure is and then we can cut it up. So let's do that. Looking very good. I got the back section all cut. I got both the quarter panels cut. I'm going to come in here, maybe trim this a little bit. I might wait on that, but I definitely want to get this trimmed and then my rocker trimmed and then this inside here. And we're probably going to call that an episode. After I get all that cut up, we will obviously take it for a drive. You have to take one of these for a drive. When you cut it up, it's just, you know, it's part of the rules. It's also a ton of fun because it's so light now. But 
I'm running out of time. We have a ton of hours in this episode. I say that every week, but I really do. So we're going to cut a little bit more, get some of this stuff out of the way, and probably call her there. But uh, I'm rambling. Get back to work. Check it out. It is 99% cut. Like I said, I'll still have to do a little more trimming whenever we go to put the older body on top, but I'm beat. I got, this is an 18 hour day and this was basically the third one I've had on this one. So we got a lot of hours in this, getting it cut up the right way. The good news is I think all I gotta do is put a couple, bolt a couple grounds back up. I undid a couple wires in the back and the doors and stuff, I just unplugged them. So we should be good there. Um, I think I'm going to be able to just throw a battery in this and uh, fire it up tomorrow. We'll take it for a spin, which will be a lot of fun. Sweet. I'm going to bed. I'm tired. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. Look at this beautiful day, 70 degrees and sunny. Definitely a good day to do some stupid shit. Goal for today is to take this old girl for a spin. I probably have like five things that need to be regrounded. Obviously, you lose all your grounds whenever you cut so much of the car off. I also have some cut wires. I believe that we're going to the, I don't know, something on the roof, probably the dome light. I don't know. There was a bunch of wires, though, that uh, got cut that I was not trying to cut. So we need to go through those, make sure none of those are open before we plug the battery back in. And then we'll try and start it. Hopefully, hopefully we should be okay. One thing I will say that was awesome, this Mustang had about half the wiring that the Lincoln did um, on that truck. So it what there wasn't as much wiring as I thought there was going to be. And luckily most of it ran under the car or on the inside of the rocker panel. So nothing really got cut. I was keeping an eye out. I didn't want to cut it, but nothing was really in my way, which is awesome. So let's uh, go through this wiring and try and fire it up. Okay. I think I have all my wires put back. Something made noise. My door light is on. Okay, it's time to take it for a spin. Obviously, I don't want to go to jail today, so we're just going to play within the alley a little bit. I got the GoPro hooked up. I never know how the GoPro footage is going to come out, but I got the GoPro footage hooked up perfect where you can see over my shoulder. So let's have some fun. so much more power than I thought it was. Ow. <laughs> Please tell me you didn't break. Please tell me you didn't break. Oh, you're fine, baby. You're fine. Oh, no. Did you break? Oh, no. It might have broke. So I uh, legitimately thought I broke my camera whenever I ran into it. <laughs> I was trying to park a little bit closer than I should have. But there are few things that are as fun as driving with a <laughs> chassis that's been stripped of the body. It's just so light. It's so much fun. Very, very excited. You know, we're going to be doing a crazy low rider paint job on the roof on this 1954 Chevy. And if we can get to 100K before the end of 2022, I will give this car away for free to one of my subscribers. No purchase necessary. Now, let's get to painting. Got it all sanded, very, very smooth, very nice. What I'm gonna do with this, I wanna seal this all up with an epoxy sealer. It'll bond to the little bit of, you know, paint rust that's left and also be real good on this bare metal. As you can see here, this is the dent. It's actually not as bad as I thought. I thought it was a lot worse than this. I kind of thought it went over there. I'm gonna hammer and dolly on it a little bit. Unfortunately, there's a brace that runs on the inside that I can't really get in there very good, but either way, we shouldn't need a ton of Bondo, so. I'm going to bang on this for a little bit and then we'll uh, throw some mud in it.
So I'm getting ready to paint the roof on this 1954 Chevy. And a lot of people don't realize you can actually use latex house paint. It actually works out really well. It, it really coats it good. It goes on really thick too. I got this tan color. Definitely need to mix it up a little bit. It's been sitting a lot. This is the trim color we use for the house. But, uh, let me show you. And all you gotta do is just get a roller, load up your brush, start rolling just like you would do your house. Just like that. Check it out, it's not too bad. You just gotta take your time. Looks pretty good. And then just like that, you got a latex roof. Just in case there's like three people that actually think I'm being serious, uh, that's just a sealer. <laughs> and it is Eastwood's roll-on kit. Um, I've used it a couple times before in videos, so some of you might know, but um, they have special rollers that are real thin. They just, you know, really put the paint on real thin so it's not like clumpy like you would think a normal roller is. I've used it several times and I'm a big fan. This is just the sealer. Uh, I'm actually out of the high build primer. They actually have a high build primer that's really, really good. But I'm gonna push this outside because this stuff stinks. We'll get back on it tomorrow. The next day. Look at how nice this is dried. Oof, actually looks slicker than shit. <laughs> That's basically damn near a base coat. <laughs> we just need to scuff it and we'll probably throw some silver on it. Sweet. Whenever we get done with this paint job, we'll throw some glass in it. This is basically gonna be all done. On to the paint. The primer looks good. Primer sealer came out really good. I got a couple spots where I put it a little too thick. That's on me, not the paint. <laughs> and then we're gonna go ahead and throw a base coat down. Then we'll let it dry for a day or so and we will uh, start doing our lace. But for now, we gotta get sanded. Okay, got it scuffed. It's not great. Probably should sand it a little bit more, but that's all right. I found a couple pinholes I got to fix. While that Bondo is drying in my little pinholes, I'm gonna go ahead and start taping stuff off and uh, probably start mixing some paint. So let's do that. Look at that silver, baby. Ooh. So pretty. Oh, it's my common enemy, math. Uh, it's a little too runny. Let's dump a little more of that in. Ooh, that might have been too much. Oh yeah, screw it, let's see what happens. Spray some shit. So it is currently the butt crack of dawn. I think it's like 5.45 or something crazy. The reason that's crazy is because we're gonna paint basically all day on this roof to get it knocked out. The silver did not come out great. Uh, it looked all right. And then as you can see in the middle, I was like, ah, I couldn't tell, you know, if I could get paint. It's like, it might be a little uneven on the roof in the center. Let me get up there and you just can't reach up there very good. So instead of my paint gun being straight down, it was at a weird angle and I just got this like overcast look on the roof, which is not great, but uh, we're gonna fix it. My dad's coming in to do some work today. We're basically gonna paint the entire day today to finish up this roof. The plan is fix the light cover silver. Light, <laughs> let's start that all over, too early. The plan is to fix the light silver. Then we're gonna go over with our lace. We got our, uh, you know, curtain lace, really, really exciting. Then we're going to do dark silver over the top of that. Then we're going to pull that off there and we're going to start doing a bunch of little different colored sections. The plan is to knock all that out today and uh, we're going to see. So let's get going. Also, look how good this old girl's looking. You got to check that video on Tuesday though. <laughs> hey, did you, uh, did you put a racing stripe down the middle of that? Yeah, it's a little dry in the middle. If you feel it with your hand, it's, it's about like an 80 grit. Oh no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to time lapse. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, the, with it. the blue from the Dodge. Yeah, I kind of like it. And then, you, and then lace in here. Lace it first. But you're not lacing this out here. Yeah. Yeah. Check it out. We stole Grandma's curtain. Ooh, it's about time.
Yeah, it's already in the cup. Or it's already in the gun, I think. Check it out, it's all done. Still needs to dry a little bit. We didn't go as crazy as we were going to, but I like it. We were gonna get real crazy, but I don't know how much of the pearl you can see, but there's orange pearl, blue pearl, yellow pearl, and I can't remember, there was, oh, and gold. <laughs> yeah, it looks crazy in real life. I'm going to untape it, let it sit outside, and uh, we'll take a look at it out there. Check it out, just got it all cleaned up. There's a bunch of overspray on it. It looks so good. Sun isn't really cooperating right now to show off the pearl, but let me see if I can get back here and show you. <laughs> I mean, that's cool as shit. There's literally like five different types of pearl in it. We ended up using 10 colors. <laughs> Didn't go crazy. So many people thought we were going crazy. We were gonna go crazy, but not like crazy blow it out of proportion. The silver top kind of looks like the stock white top that it would have had in certain options. It just looks perfect, man. I love it. But it's also, you know, it's got a little flash to it. <laughs> it still needs cut and buffed and all that, but hell on this build, we might not even bother with it. So, so excited. <laughs> I really like it. Thank you very much for watching. I am so excited with how this came out. It just looks really good. It's crazy how long it took. We were gonna go even crazier, but we're probably 10 hours in on this paint job, just between all the layers and all the different colors. So many different colors. It ended up being 10 different colors and also seven different shades of pearl clear coat. So. 16 different coats basically just to get that, which it's crazy, but it could be so much crazier. We were gonna go super nuts, but I really like the way it is. The silver kind of being on the sides just makes it look kind of normal. It's not super crazy. And then you come up on it and it just, it really grabs your attention. So we are gonna put the windshields front and back in the 1954 Chevy. This is basically the last thing this needs. Obviously there's lots of stuff that could be done. I, I still have the side glass. I'm not gonna worry about all that right now. I do want windshields in it so I can start driving it around a little bit. So me and dad are gonna throw these in real quick. This is basically the last step on this old girl for a little bit. Fucking sweet! Almost I let it sit out on a hot day and do it too. Yeah. yeah. Just beat the fuck out of it. She's got glass in. It's time to take her for a drive. We're gonna take it up to dad's house. Get it out of here. I've been worried about getting it scratched up while working on the Mustang. I get to take her for a proper drive. I'm so excited. So, funny story. We get the glass in. Everything's great. I mean, it's looking awesome. We fire it up. We fire up the GoPro. We're going to take it for its drive. This is basically its last drive. I'm not going to worry about the side glass. I'm going to probably just give that to whoever the new owner is. If we end up not hitting 100K, I'll probably end up doing it and keeping it. Anyways, I was like, it's done, final drive. I have a windshield, I can actually get it on the highway, take it for a proper drive, and the fuel pump goes out. <laughs> I think my wiring was hitting, I just kinda had it ran across there, and I think I pulled it too tight and it got broke through the sheathing on the wiring, ground itself out, so my fuel pump, these are just little cheapy fuel pumps, electric fuel pump, it shorted out and it's not good anymore. So we have a new fuel pump, I'm gonna jack it up, get the old one out of there, put the new one on, and then hopefully that fixes our problem. We can fire it up, take it for its drive, but I thought it was kind of funny. I mean, GoPro was rolling. <laughs> it's gonna be an awesome footage, and it just died on me. I was like, what the hell? I can't hear the fuel pump running. Oh, it's because it's shorted out and I'm an idiot. So I just said all that to say I was an idiot like three times, but yeah, let's uh, fix the fuel pump. Okay, new fuel pump. I think we're good. Found out I was out of gas. 
Okay, glass is all done. Everything's ready to go. It's finally running well. I got everything worked out with the fuel pump. Very, very excited. I'm gonna pull it outside. I'm gonna give it a nice little wash and then we're gonna throw a GoPro on the fender. Probably put a camera inside so you can see me. And we're gonna take it for a drive. I would like to get on the highway a little bit. We're gonna take it up to my dad's house. It's basically gonna go up there pretty much in storage until we do something with it. I'll probably drive it here and there a little bit, but I'm basically done with the build. Hopefully we can get the 100K. Please, dear God, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Hopefully we can get to the 100K and I will give this to one of my subscribers for absolutely free. But if we don't, I'm definitely gonna drive the shit out of it. I'm gonna have some fun with it. Traditional builds are really cool because it's just all 50s technology. You know, it's really, it's, it's pretty neat. It's not gonna be the fastest car. It's not gonna break the best, but it just looks cool as shit. Let's get her washed and let's take her for a spin.
What a cool looking car, man. <laughs> I love this fucking thing. Ooh! Calm down a little bit. That was loud. <laughs> that was she gonna sit up here next to the trike for a little bit. Sweet. Thank you very much for watching. Please, for God's sakes, hit that subscribe button. Like I said, probably three times in this video already. If we hit 100K by the end of 2022, I will give this away for free. I really am okay with keeping it. It's a fun car. Traditional builds are cool because it's basically like driving a time capsule, but it would also be cool to give it away to one of my subscribers. It is time to finish the 1955 lifted four-wheel drive rat rod truck build. In this video, we're gonna button up everything that needs done. Our hood fits like shit. Our inner fenders fit like shit. On the last video, I asked you guys if we should do a bed floor or not. I would say 99% of the comments said, please do a bed floor, throw a piece of plywood in there. So we're gonna cut all these strips out, then we're gonna fit our wood in there and then we'll put the strips back in. I'm gonna go with a burnt finish and then seal it up with some used motor oil. I actually did that on the last 55 Ford truck I built. I think that was almost two years ago at this point. It still looks great. It really seals it nice and you don't have to like keep reapplying it. It looks awesome. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do is cut all of these strips out and then we'll start kind of figuring out how we're gonna get that piece in there. I think it needs shaved down a little bit on each side. And then obviously we need to cut the wood for where the uh, gas filler neck is. Let's cut some shit. That was a lot harder than it should have been. I didn't really like cutting around the gas tank very much, so I got the Sawzall out, which made it a lot harder, but I didn't have sparks everywhere. I got all this out. I need to cut all the strips off the actual bars, or the subfloor, rather, and then I'll put the subfloor back in there, and then we can get the plywood in there so it has something to bolt to. Basically, I just said all that to say I gotta cut some more shit. This is why this takes so long. Look how many little <laughs> bolts there are that need cut. Great news, got it all done. Got our strips out. Now, if this wasn't a rat rod and I want it to be real nice, what I would do is I would actually go to like an Ace Hardware and get some one inch or two inch strips of aluminum. And then you can just really, you know, shine the aluminum up and then just screw it into the board. Since we're going with the rat rod theme, I'm just gonna screw these right back in. We'll leave them rusty. So uh, yeah, I gotta put these subfloors in now. All right, got the floor braces in there. They're good. I was walking all over them. Nothing was moving, which is nice. That's all really solid and looking good. I have a problem. It's time to start cutting the wood to fit. I have a perfectly straight line that needs cut, and I do not have my skill saw. So I'm too lazy to go to the other shop. I'm going to attempt to cut a four-foot straight line with a very small sawzall blade. Really dumb, but let's see how it is. Oh, uh, this ain't looking good. Ooh, that might help. I don't know, that might make it worse. Clean this up with a grinder now. Check it out. The test fit looks perfect. I'm just gonna leave that open for now. If it if I was keeping it, I'd probably like cover that, you know, with like some sheet metal, but it'll be okay for now. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out. There's a couple things I need to weld in there, and also it's gonna be easier to do the burn finish over here on the table. I'll probably screw it in after I do the burn finish, and then we'll do our motor oil uh, stain on top. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it looks. Oh, now I gotta pull it back out. It's not light, so I'm just uh, procrastinating. <laughs> okay, it is time to do the burn finish. It's really, really sophisticated. It's really tough to explain. You light the wood on fire. <laughs> yeah, boy. That's, that's it. You just do it until you think it looks good. I did a little test corner down there. I kind of like it a little darker than not dark, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna light this shit on fire. Let's go. Alright, it's taking too long with my little torch. Let's light it on fire.
Oh, that's not too bad. We need a little bit more of that, and then we'll go back in with the small torch. Check it out. Looks pretty good. Got the wood down, got the strips just screwed in. The easy part now is the motor oil sealant. Just take any used motor oil, put it on there. It'll really darken it up. It looks like a dark stain. Let's do that now and call this a day. This is authentic Porsche used engine. Now it is a fake Porsche, that's okay, but it did come out of the Porsche. Now this is very scientific. Yes, give her some of that. Oh no, I forgot. I forgot there was water mixing that oil. That's not what I want. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> cool, I found a uh, old shitty. Perfect. I just dipped that in my used oil. There we go. You better turn. You better be there when I shake. Watch me rocking the fire. Check it out. It's hard to tell the way the light's hitting it, but. It looks perfect, <laughs> other than the spots where I accidentally put the uh, chocolate milkshake and not the oil. I forgot that there was a bunch of water in that motor, <laughs> so other than that, it's okay. This will this will actually just soak in overnight, and then we'll end up doing another coat tomorrow. But the darker the used oil, the better. The darker it looks, it looks like a dark stain, basically. I really like that, especially for what it is. Check it out. It is the next day. This looks absolutely amazing. I will probably add another coat of oil to it to darken it up a little bit more. But I mean, for now, I'm way cool that we're going to move on to something else. But this looks great. You take a 40 or $50 piece of plywood, you reuse the strips you had, you burn it. You know, you spend 20, 30 minutes burning it, and then just add some dark old motor oil, and you get a piece that looks... You know, it looks like some sort of fancy mahogany, whatever. It looks a lot more expensive than it actually is. I have done this probably 10 times now on trucks. I really, really like the way it looks. Um, if this wasn't a rat rod and I was trying to make it look even nicer, I think I said already, you can uh, use aluminum strips and then buff them to like a chrome, basically, and it'll look even better than it does. But this is perfect for this one. Really, really happy with it. We are going to move on to the hood now. This hood is a train wreck. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do all this by myself, but I'm going to find out here real quick. The problem is the owner mounted the hinges. He cut this cowl in half whenever he did his body swap, and he had to remount these hinges from scratch, and they're actually about an inch higher than they need to be, maybe two inches. As you can see, this hood will never fit flush with my spring being above the cowl. So I need to get in here, unbolt all this, drill these out and sink them down. And these hinges suck anyway, let alone needing to drill them out, cut them and all that fun stuff. So I'm not very excited about it, but it's time to bite the bullet and get it done. So let's go. If I should fall, just go ahead. Okay, that was a giant pain in the ass much harder than it should have been i was originally just going to drill these holes out he has welded a quarter inch plate behind there that is super super strong actually so i'm going to try and reuse it the only problem is now the only adjustability i'm going to have is going to be on the hinge which i don't really care because i hate these hinges so much so what i'm going to do is actually drill out the holes on the hinges so everything is too high so i need to come up here you know half inch quarter inch whatever i could technically just waller these out to like an oval but i think that's going to be harder than just drilling new so let's drill the shit out of some hinges baby, catch me, baby. okay got them all drilled out and i basically just drilled holes a half inch above where they were i'm hoping that's going to be enough relief if it's not we're gonna to have to come up with a different strategy because i really I drilled as much as I could with still using <laughs> that hinge setup. So uh, it's going to be a real pain in the ass trying to get this on there by myself. But let's uh, wrestle it for a while and see what happens. These are just the worst hinges on the planet. I fucking hate them so much. Uh, I'm gonna figure something else out. I have been drilling them and moving them and I've spent the whole day on it basically and it still will not shut right. So I'm pulling these pieces of shit off. We're gonna figure something out. I don't care if I do <laughs> a fucking belt. It ain't gonna be these things. They suck so much. I hate these hinges. Okay, so I threw a little fit. I was very mad at the hinges. Had a whole thing, did a speech. I worked on it another hour and a half trying to figure it out and I just got more mad. So the hinges are gone. 
I got a couple screws in the top of the hood for now, and we're going to do belts, and that's going to be it for now, just so I can drive the goddamn thing, and we'll figure something out later. I know they make a tilt hood for these. They're like a grand, though. I don't obviously want to do that, but I don't know. We're going to do belts like we did on the 51 Chevy. It's going to be fine. I have to move on to something else. I, it's literally been six hours today, and it just isn't working. So uh, these inner fenders need welded to the fenders. As you can see, they're all just kind of hanging, and there's also, um, I believe, there's reinforcements on the inside that either need bolted up or need welded as well. So we're going to do all that so these aren't hanging. So we can finally take her for a proper drive. The only drive I've done, I basically went around the block a couple times. I actually want to get it out and buzz it around a little bit and uh, see how it drives with a window in. be a lot nicer than it was without the window. So let's weld some shit. Okay, inner fenders are done. My chrome center caps finally came in, so we will put those on tomorrow as well. Ooh, yeah, baby. Great news. I found the belts. These are actually sent in by a subscriber. I cannot remember his name, though. I apologize, but they're awesome. They are Carhartt belts. They're real thick leather. They're going to be perfect. The hood belt trick is kind of hacky, to be completely honest with you, but I love the way it looks. I've done it several times now, and it's really easy to, if you don't like it and you are the giveaway winner, it's really easy to just unscrew them and then have a normal setup. Um, I like them a lot better than trying to fix these broken, bent-ass hood hinges. Also, the giveaway winter they're gonna be able to do whatever they want with these they're gonna come off real easy or they can run the belts like i said i love them uh, i was gonna put the bumper in but i got to looking at it and the way those brackets work they're gonna be right in the way of this s10 spare tire well so i think i'm just gonna leave it off and let whoever wins it figure out what they want to do with the rear bumper to be completely honest with you they sell these bumpers chrome really cheap, and if it was me, I would probably just put a new one on. Somebody has actually welded half of these brackets on, and it's coming apart, and it's just beat all to hell. So if it was me, and I had to make all new brackets, I would probably just use a new bumper. It'd look 10 times better. But let's see if we can't get these belts figured out. I mean, I'm not lying to you. I do not hate that. It is time to put on our chrome hubcaps. I'm supposed to have chrome lug nuts too, but I guess they just haven't showed up yet. I ordered them like two weeks ago, so no big deal. We're not gonna stress on them, but I do wanna get the hubcaps on. So let's throw them on right now. You better grab that tambourine. Bring the bass, we might be it is done. It's filthy. It really needs to get washed. I'm gonna take it down to the car wash. It's about two miles from here. Be a perfect little drive. We'll get it all cleaned up. I'm really happy with how this truck came out, especially considering what it is. I wasn't the biggest fan of how the previous owner did the body swap. It was an abandoned project. I picked it up super cheap, spent, eh, whatever, a month on it, maybe a month and a half, just kind of putting it all back together. We stole a bunch of parts off of it for my other 55, and I'm really happy with it. Nice little cheap rat rod. Budget build, four-wheel drive. You could have some fun in the mud with this thing. Let's take a first spin. I got two GoPros, and I'm going to have this camera, too. So let's go to the car wash, and hopefully we don't get stabbed. Knock on wood. Knock on 57 Chevy. Just realized I did not put the mirrors on. <laughs> That's all right.
Great news, we got it washed. I did not get stabbed. Is there anything scarier than that smile sign? Obviously they mean smile, there's a camera here, but it's, it's really like smile, you're about to get taken hostage. Well, she looks good, wet, ayo. That sounded dirty, didn't mean it that way. All right, I'm gonna go take this for a spin, get it dried off, probably park it over at the shop and uh, do the old 360 view video on her and uh, see how she looks. That was a ton of fun. She's looking great. I did a big old nasty burnout coming out of the uh, car wash. Did a big old tail slide. Looked awesome. I was laughing my ass off. I turned my head. There's a cop right there on the street. <laughs> and I looked over. I kind of saw him. He kind of saw me. And I was like, eh, he didn't do anything. So I took off. Hilarious. We are working on the beautiful 1957 Chevy. This is actually my favorite car ever. The first car I ever owned was a 1957 Chevy two-door post. I've always liked the two-door hard tops more. They were just so expensive. I never thought I would ever own one. <laughs> this is a customer car, but we're going to be doing a giveaway on it when we get done. Or I might just pay for it and keep it myself because I love it so much. Goal is we're gonna be doing an LS swap. We're updating the suspension. We're doing a three inch drop kit, all new brakes, all new stuff like that. The great thing about the 57s, I think in my opinion, is they don't need much. You can just drop them a little bit, put a bigger motor in them and just have some fun with them. They really look good with just kind of a mild little hot rod touch to them. And that's what we're doing on this one. Some of this footage is gonna be all over the place. I had to build a 1955 Ford truck while I was working on this. So some of this footage might be a month old. It might be two weeks old, but it is everything we've done to it. We're finally done with this one and the giveaway is over. Over, so we're gonna be getting out of here this was just a parts truck it was never really supposed to be a build i just kind of wanted it whipped together so i could get it outside but now we are finally back on my baby let's get to work goal is to get the brakes in and i've already messed with it for probably an hour or two and it's fighting me just because everything is rusty and all that kind of fun stuff so let's uh hit it with a hammer some and see if we can't get it in there pain in the ass than I thought it was gonna be. I'm just gonna put these in finger tight because I'll probably pull this back off whenever we throw the motor in. But I wanna make sure all my adjustments are good. It is in! Awesome. Oh, that ended up needing completely redrilled out. All the hardware was bad. I had to cut the hole bigger. Ugh. We got new brakes and they look great. I really like how small and compact they are. A lot of times those boosters are huge. Sweet! All right, on to the next. I was gonna start messing with the motor stuff, but I think I'm gonna go back and mess with the front end. I didn't hook the steering up. I don't remember why I didn't do that. <laughs> it's kind of stupid. I had to put it on these dollies because without the steering hooked up, the wheels just wanna do what they want individually. And we love individuality, but not when it's your front wheels. So I think I'm gonna jack it up, start messing with that and get that taken care of. Also, I think one of my springs I needed to adjust. I don't remember, but I think I'm gonna find out whenever I get under there. So let's jack it up. 
We have decided that we're going to ditch this motor that we have because we've just ran into kind of some issues with it. It's a little bit too modern for what we need. This is a 2018 and it can work obviously, but you just need to delete a bunch of stuff and it's just more than we're bargaining for on this. This is going to be a cool ass car with a nice LS. It doesn't need to have a L83 or whatever. So, and continue on our front end. Got this side done working everything's great also got this one done working everything's great now we gotta do the driver's side of both cars let's start on the 57. check it out baby front end is done finally now we're gonna move on to the rear end i got a three inch drop kit for the rear Sweet. She looks good too, baby. Okay, so I was gonna finish up doing the brakes on the 57. I have my brake hoses that come with the kit. Came over here, start to screw it in, realize it is not the right hose at all. It is impossible for this to go in there. It needs a banjo bolt that will have a 90 degree out. So I called the company. They said, oh, sorry, we'll send you some more. Who knows how long that is gonna take. Now I could technically, Still go ahead and bend up my lines and kind of have a good idea where those are going to go. I don't really like doing that, though. I really like to make them straight to it so that I'm not making a line. You know, you don't want to spend 30 minutes making your lines and then they're an inch too short or an inch too long or whatever. So I'm going to go ahead and wait until those come in next week sometime. And we're just going to keep plugging along. I have a two inch drop kit for the rear end. I'm going to go ahead and get that installed. I already put the two inch drop spindles on the front end. So we're gonna do this to go ahead and match. So let's jack this up and start uh, taking the leaf springs out. Also, I actually forgot, I got all new urethane bushings for the leaf springs too. So we're gonna go ahead and put those in. I'm 99% sure the stock ones will be junk. So we'll replace those as well. Check it out. It wouldn't be a 1980s build if we didn't have giant air shocks. <laughs> they are rusted solid, so I gotta take all this shit apart. Great news, the front bushings on the leaf springs look fine. Uh, I think they've been changed. The rear ones look like shit though, so we're gonna go ahead and change those out. These are not the stock shackles. Um, I think these are actually, I don't know if these are lowering shackles or lifting shackles, but I'm gonna go ahead and use them. I'll put our two inch blocks in. We'll see where this gets us. If I need to, obviously I can move them around, but uh, yeah, I gotta take all this shit apart. It is rusted solid. If I get lucky, I can unbolt the U-bolts, but nine times out of 10, you gotta cut these out because they look like shit. So uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get to taking this apart. I had to go get the big guns out, baby. Couldn't touch it. The other cheapy Harbor Freight one couldn't touch it. These new Hercules are freaking animals. These rear bushings are so bad, I'm gonna have to drill them out. <laughs> That's a new one for me. <laughs> All right, so I got everything stripped. I got everything off. We can put our lowering blocks in and we can also put our new bushings in. And then we got new U-bolts and all that good stuff. I'll go ahead and bolt that up and we will see where we need to be on these rear shackles because they are adjustable. I think I'm just gonna put them back where they are. It should be fine. If I need to go lower, I can, which is nice. So yeah, let's put all this shit back together. I really don't need to get the gas tank out yet, but it's just such a rusty piece of shit. I'm gonna go ahead and grab it while we're under here. Oh, God, that stinks. Check it out. 
This is actually kind of funny. This is the original tank and it doesn't have any holes in it. Um, it just, it obviously has some really old gas in it or just remnants of it because it reeks, it smells so bad, it smells like turpentine. But funny enough, that original tank could probably be boiled out and reused. Um, we're gonna have to use a pressurized tank because we're doing an LS swap, but I was 100% not expecting that to actually be a good tank. That's kind of funny, but let's get the wheels on this. Um, my brake parts will not be here until next week. A couple other things I'm waiting on won't be here until next week, but I do want to get the wheels on, get it on the ground, and we'll look at what our drop is. Um, I believe we did a three in the front, two in the rear. Uh, might have been the other way around, but yeah, I'm also going to push it outside. It's been in the shop for way too long. I want to see it outside in the sun. So let's throw these wheels on. Finally sold the L84, L83, I can't remember what it was, motor that we had. It was out of a 2018 Yukon. We decided to sell it, just go with a normal LS swap. I really like this Corvette LS3. This is going in my customer's other build. We're going to be starting here in a little bit. But if I cannot find an LS and a transmission here pretty soon, I'm going to use these two at least for mock-up so that I can get all my motor mounts, transmission mounts, and stuff done. So it's nice to get that out of here. And uh, we can find us an LS to throw in this baby. Wow. Okay, so... Maybe you don't need to uh, turn it all the way up when you're putting lug nuts in. I just snapped the stud off. <laughs> oh shit. This thing's a freaking beast. Oh shit. Check her out. First time she's been out a long time. This three, it's drop looks really good. I haven't taken off the original barn dust yet. That barn dust is worth like 50 grand on its own. I love this fucking thing. Oh shit. I'm 100% in the road's way. Well, that's okay. Oh. I really like how this looks too. This came out nice. That's worth 50 grand. Check this out. Not the car. This is original barn dust. Look at that. Oof. I'm gonna take all this off and sell it on eBay. All you gotta do is take a shitbox car, sprinkle the barn dust on it, say it's been sitting for 30 years and it's worth 50 grand at least. Come on now, give me something. I'm getting yelled at in Spanish over here. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I don't know if my video picked it up or not, but while I was outside recording the 57, my Mexican neighbor yelled over, I'm handsome, put me on camera. And I about pissed my pants because it was the funniest thing I've ever heard. Naturally, I tried to spin around and get him on camera. It didn't work out so well. But yeah, that's the kind of stuff that you have to deal with when you have shop neighbors. He was just yelling at me the whole time and I could not stop laughing. This one has a soft spot in my heart. This is gonna be a giveaway whenever we get done with it. Or I might just buy it outright and keep it for myself. I don't know. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. It's my first time sitting in it. The door handle just fell off. <laughs> I can't make this shit up. What is that? Brake release. Glove box is locked. I gotta check that. Hopefully there's money in there. Oh. The key, uh, the lock is just ruined. Gonna have to figure that out. Uh-oh. Oh. oh. Let's charge the battery. Oh no, how do I get out? I got my jump box hooked up. She needs belts really bad, but we're running. There's three belts. Two of them are almost off completely. Oh my God, look at the eight ball shifter. Not out of gas, too. Shit, it's running better than I thought it was. Okay, okay. Oh, oh. Brakes need some work. Let's see if we have reverse. Well, okay, there goes the first. We gotta get it in the shop while I still can. Yeah, it's probably low on fluid, hopefully. 
Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, don't hit my truck. Don't hit the truck. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> oh shit, how do we get out? She needs some work. Okay, we finally got her inside. Uh, let's take a look at it. You guys are looking at it the same way I'm looking at it. Like I said, I bought this side unseen. I did have some pictures, but not many. He only had like two or three up. One very interesting thing before we get into this whole mess is this is a 1978. The Monte Carlo in training day is a 79, but you can easily switch parts over from 78 to 79. There's only like two or three little things that are different on them, but check this out. This is a 78 tail light and whatever you call this piece here i'm not sure that's how a 78 is look at this he already started switching it to a 79 the 79 the tail light wraps around the corner and then it has a different piece here so that's pretty awesome that i already have you know one of these already started uh this isn't the best looking tail light so i'm going to go ahead and see if i can't find maybe just a complete set of 79s but it's super awesome that it's kind of already started to do the transformation that i'm wanting to do yeah it's beat all to hell <laughs> which you know most 80s cars are but it's definitely fixable it's a little bit rougher than i wanted as far as how straight it is because it does have to be black the training day monte carlo is black black whenever you paint black it just shows every single little imperfection because it shines like a mirror black is by far the most you know transparent color as far as like bad body work or nicks or dings or anything like that so that's a little upsetting because we really need it to be straight but we'll figure it out no big deal all this chrome needs to come off the monte carlo in training day doesn't have the side chrome it does have the chrome on the roof and stuff which is okay yeah yeah we gotta take all this off missing a lock this door handle is not hooked up i found out interior is not great Got a lot of shit missing in here. Obviously the front seat doesn't look good. Cracked dash, broke windshield. I have not been in the trunk yet. I came back here to use the key and the lock mechanism is gone. So I'm gonna get a screwdriver. We will pop this trunk and see what we got in there. Hopefully it's my door panels and stuff because I really don't want to have to try and find those. As you can see, I'm missing. Yes, I do have the back still in. That's good. But yeah, let's check it. Man, that is way back there. Oh, got it. Yes! Sweet! Oh, that's busted all the hell. Need to get a passenger side. Driver side looks good. There are my door panels. Oh. Oh, wow. I didn't realize that. There are two pieces. Oh, okay. So that needs re-glued. But I do have two of them, don't I? I think so. I bet this is the 79, because they were trying to change shit over for the 79. I bet that's what that is. We need that. What the hell is that? Oh, it's broken mirror. Got a bunch of little brackets in there. I don't know what those are. I guess, well, I don't know what these are, actually. I was going to say, I assume they go to the door panel, but I don't know what that is. That might not even be a car part, to be honest with you. And we got a spare. And some other knick-knack bullshit. Okay. No rust back here is really nice. Super happy to have those. I was already checking for door panels online and they are not cheap and they weren't in any better shape than that. So that's really nice. Let's go take a look at this motor. We already know from our drive, it would not go in reverse. Whenever they don't go in reverse, usually it's because you're low on oil. Whenever you get or low on transmission fluid, whenever you get low on transmission fluid, reverse is the first gear to go out. So let's check that out. Also, first look, I see like three vacuum lines that aren't hooked up. So that's never good. <laughs> okay, check it out. Look how loose some of these belts are. <laughs> that one is just worn down enough, and this one is just barely even on there. We definitely need all new belts. Looks like my wires are plugged in. The battery is new, and it was already dead, so that makes me worried about this alternator. But hopefully, it just isn't spinning because this belt was so bad. So I got new belts coming. Vacuum line not hooked up. Vacuum line not hooked up. Vacuum line not hooked up. Um, <laughs> that's just a breather not hooked up. So yeah, we need to get all that little stuff hooked up and good. I don't care about putting a four barrel on it. If the two barrel is working, there is usually a fuel filter inside there. I'm going to go ahead and crack that all out and we'll just kind of do some general maintenance on it. See if we can't get it running a little bit better. But first we need to get all these leaves and shit out of here and then we'll start digging in. Okay, so funny story, 
All three belts are just completely shit. They are no good at all. I go to O'Reilly's, I get a bunch of new fluids. I say, hey, I need the three belts. On a Monte Carlo, <laughs> me and the O'Reilly's guy are sitting there for probably 10 minutes trying to figure out which combination of belts. And I said, what, what's going on? What, what's the problem? He goes, I need to know, you know, if it's the alternator, power steering, pump, fan. I'm like, what is going on? He goes, there's 10 different belts that it can be. And I said, well, here's the ones that are on it. They're so worn out, you can't really tell. I said, you know what? Give me all 10. So bada bing, I got every belt that a 78 Monte Carlo should ever take. So hopefully that combination of belts, we should be able to get these all put back together, which is really nice. Also got some transmission fluid, got some brake fluid, all kinds of fun stuff like that. I did not get the fuel filter because I haven't dug into it yet. So that's what I want to do right now. I want to see how bad it is. It's running okay, so I'm not too worried about it, but it's always something good to check whenever you're kind of just going through all this shit. So let's do that. Okay, we are doing our general maintenance. I got the belts replaced. That was a real big pain in the ass. Got it taken care of. Fuel filter was actually fine. Didn't even have to change that. It looks brand new. Came over here to check my brake fluid. This is real interesting. Oh no, God! Uh, yeah, that is transmission no. fluid. No! I can't say that I've ever seen that before in my life. Holy shit. So, uh, yeah, I, I guess I can drain it from here and then top it off and see what happens, but I assume I'm gonna have to get it all out of there. Wow, that's a new one for me. Oh, I got it all out of there, but I don't know. It's still on the lines, but let's see what happens. All right, we are continuing with our service. I got all the vacuum lines either plugged or hooked back up. There was like five of them. I mean, I can't tell you how bad that is for an engine having that many vacuum leaks, just all kinds of issues. Um, we did get the brake fluid filled up and then check this out. I just realized 20 minutes went by and I already have a leak. And the one of these reservoirs was bone dry whenever I went to change it. That obviously was the back, so I have a bad brake line we're going to have to change out. No big deal, not the end of the world. I can't really see where it's at, so I'm not going to mess with it just yet. I'm going to continue on with all this stuff. I'm trying to do the transmission fluid and then the oil, and then we're going to go ahead and fire it up and see if it's running a little bit better. But there's just so many little problems that we needed fixed, and hopefully we're putting a dent in them now. But let's continue. Okay, we've got all our fluid changed, got all the vacuum lines done, got everything done except the brake line that's bad. Uh, I got parts coming, but they're not gonna be here this video. I wanna see if it sounds better now that hopefully that took care of a lot of issues. Really need the WD-40 at the door. Oh, man. Oh, fuck. Oh, my God. Still sounds like I got a vacuum leak. <laughs> I got a little bit of a rattle sound. I think the air compressor might be bad or the bearing in it because I don't hear it all the time, but I hear it every now and then. I did forget to check to make sure it was charging whenever it was running. So I'm going to do that now. It looks like they had some of the bolts off of the alternator, so that's not... That's never a <laughs> Definitely got a WD-40 at the door. <laughs> Charging. 15 bolts. I wonder why they were taking bolts off then. Maybe they were taking the bolts off to do the belts. Let's take it for a little drive. Oh shit. I I keep saying I need a WD-40 to this door and I have it. I don't know why. We're gonna take it for a drive. We probably shouldn't. It's not great, but it could be better than it was. I need to make sure I have a reverse more than anything.
flat as long. We definitely got to fix our back brakes. Front brakes do most of the braking, but when you're going fast, you really need the rears. Because right there, a little bit ago, when I locked it up, it did not want to stop very quick. Next day. day two we are back on the Monte Carlo I ordered a ton of parts last night I also made a video posted it to TikTok and Instagram go follow me on TikTok and Instagram and I said hey I just got the you know Monte Carlo from training day I'm gonna try and build it up I just ordered airbags and a ton of other parts 99% of people were like that is so awesome 1% of people lost their minds that I would put airbags on it and not hydraulics the movie car did have hydraulics on it I personally am not a fan of hydros at all. I have a couple buddies that have them and they cost 10 times as much as bags and they ride super rough. I mean, they basically are like riding with no suspension. I had a couple low rider guys reach out and they said, hey, they're not that bad anymore. You can actually kind of soften them up, but they're still not a great ride. And they're still 10 times as much as I have in bags. So I'm gonna be bagging this. I do apologize if that upsets people, but I don't need it to be perfectly correct to the movie car. Technically, at the end of the movie, the car gets shot up and blown up. So if I want it to be, you know, perfectly correct to the movie, we'd need to blow this thing up. I don't want to do that very badly. I do want the look of the car, but I'd like it to be able to drive a little bit nicer, you know, than being super bouncy. So we are going to be doing airbags. I got all the stuff coming. It'll be here next week. So we'll start on that in the next video. But for now, we just took it for its drive. It's running really good. I'm really happy about it. The brake line is shot and I was losing brakes during the drive, which was not fun at all. I was scared shitless. So we're gonna go ahead and jack it up, look at the brake line. And also, all of this chrome needs to come off. The only chrome on the movie car is on the roof. I thought this clipped on. Looks like there's about a hundred little screws. So let's get it jacked up and start taking those off too. Okay. Uh, good news is that top piece was glued, so it came right off. This chrome lip wasn't too bad. I only had one screw that fought me. Naturally, we come back here. Every single one of these is just rusted solid or stripped. So I'm going to have to actually grind them out. Not really happy about it. I had a couple of uh, Monte Carlo guys tell me these always rust out the rear frame rails. Just make sure that the rust isn't near your arch because then it's not super structural, it's easier to fix. Sure enough, I have rust, it starts about right here. Um, actually, it was a little bit farther back. Right there, we're gonna have to put a plate in it, but luckily I got nothing anywhere else. Obviously, any frame rust is serious, but if it was here, 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 it basically would be a deal breaker on this build, um, but that's okay. Whenever we'll do our airbag stuff, I'll go ahead and plate all that. But for now, I need to grind all these out because they're just stripped all to hell. And then this side will be done. I already like the looks of it a lot better without the chrome. I think the chrome makes it look cheap. Also, somebody put like an AutoZone chrome edge on the door. I hate those the most, so we're gonna pop that off too. But uh, yeah, now we have to cut some shit. Okay, I got all the chrome off. I cannot tell you how excited I am that there is no rust. Anybody that has ever removed a molding knows that water can get trapped behind it. These moldings actually go all the way around the lip and they're held. So just so much mud and shit came out whenever I was pulling them off. But zero rust. I mean, that is so lucky. This is a Missouri car. <laughs> like we don't have good track records really really happy i could not be happier to be completely honest with you this quarter panel is beat to hell but that's okay if it's no rust and solid i can deal with dents i can change dents around it's not that big of a deal very very happy the other side is the exact same way 
I think what I'm gonna do now, I still need to do my brake line because it's still rusted, but I think what I'm gonna do now is start taking the rear end apart. My rear bumper is completely shit. It is not good, it's just distorted, it's real bad. So I think I'm gonna start taking it off and seeing what all needs replaced under there because I know I need a new rear bumper because it's not even salvageable. But yeah, let's pop it off. Well, I have some good news and some really, really bad news. The good news is I think I can actually make this bumper work. This bumper just fit really bad and I saw this crack and I just wasn't very happy with it. It just fit horribly, but after looking at it, it was actually in a bind because I have a rusted rear horn. This one is really bad. The good news is, quotation mark, good news is it only is about 18 inches and then it stops. If you look, these actually have just a little bit of a tilt to them and they must just hold water like crazy. It's like I said in one of the earlier videos, Monte Carlo guys told me to look out for this and they said they almost always happen. So this side being as bad as it is, that side's not good, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't go back as far. Uh, that actually kind of put this bumper in a bind and I think that's half the reason it wasn't fitting really good. The good news is the body is super solid. Nothing is moving in here. I was trying to push it in to see if anything would wiggle in and it wasn't. So bumpers are like 350 bucks, super expensive. They, nobody remakes them, so you gotta buy a used one. And the used ones I'm looking at don't look great. So I think we can make this one work, which is nice, um, but that's gonna be a little bit bigger of a job than I thought it was. Still no big deal. I've built frames from scratch before, so I can certainly patch one, <laughs> but I'm gonna need to get some two by three square tubing to kind of tie all that in uh, but it is nice i think i will be able to reuse that bumper i think i'm gonna go ahead and wait on taking the tail lights i was gonna go ahead and start stripping this stuff i don't really need to um, go that far since we have framework to do so i'm just gonna wait on that and uh start digging into the brake line now let's go see how bad it is it already has a nice little puddle the good news is the puddle is actually brake fluid that I put in yesterday. So that makes me think the transmission fluid that was in there, maybe the guy just put transmission fluid in there just to get it on the trailer when I bought it. I don't know. The bad news is the transmission fluid can just ruin all the rubber in the system. So I need to double check all my brake hoses even better because uh, there might be, you know, they might be deteriorating because of the transmission fluid. But let's crawl under there and uh, see if we can't find this leak. Check it out. I got the rusty part cut out. Unfortunately, I went through all my brake lines. I do not have the right size. I have the right size fitting, but not the right size lines. And I got to get this video out. So I'm going to go ahead and order those. We will do this on the next video. I do have some awesome news though. The rims that are on the Training Day Monte Carlo are chrome 100 spoke 14 inch rims. Well, they're very expensive. They're like $2,000 a set. I figured I'd check Facebook Marketplace. Sure enough, here in St. Joe, Missouri, which is where I live, there is a set. They're used, but they don't look too bad. They have huge tires on them. They have way too big tires on them. Uh, the lowriders, they actually run like a lot smaller tire, but the rims look really good. It has universal adapters that will bolt up to the Monty. So I'm gonna go check those right now. They are for sale for 250 bucks. Well, they're for sale for 500. I'm gonna offer 250 bucks. The person sounds like they're ready to get rid of them and uh, I'm super excited. So let's go check them out. Hopefully I can buy them and I'm running out of time on this video, but I'd like to at least throw one on if I end up buying them. The only reason I'm not gonna buy them is that they're just completely shit. They look good in the photos though, but let's go check them out. We got them. I just got them unloaded. I bought them for 250. Super excited. They look perfect. I've been looking at a lot of pictures of the training day car, obviously. And that is the exact center that it has, the exact wheel. The tires are way wrong though. These are way too big. Really, really excited. They're they're really nice. They need cleaned up, obviously. One of the threads is messed up on the adapters, but I can replace it. I'm gonna try and fix it first, but uh, I think we gotta throw one of these on there and then call it a video. So I've never really put low rider wheels on with an adapter. So this is gonna be a learning experience, but let's see it. So the person I bought these from, they said they had the tool to put this hub on, but I don't know if they actually had it. So I probably need to buy that. These cones or nuts or whatever the hell they are, <laughs> they're beat a little bit worse than I thought they were. So I will probably replace those as well. But that is definitely the right size and the right look. I was a little worried they were gonna be too wide. They look perfect. Oh yeah. <laughs> cool thing about these, the rims are really expensive. Adapters and the nuts are not that bad. I think I can get a full set of four for like 150 bucks. Oh, that's hard to do one-handed. 
check it out. Just in case you've never seen, these are called knockoff wheels. See? There's your adapter. Now, oh, super cool. Uh, like I said, these you can change out and you can get new, I don't know if they call these nuts or what they call them, but it's a giant nut is what it is. And they're threaded backwards on, I think the passenger side or vice versa. Super cool. I cannot believe I picked these up for 250 bucks. Really, really exciting. We are definitely off to a pretty good start on our training day build. Ooh, I just got my new air cleaner that showed up for this. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on. I have been driving it without an air cleaner on, which is pretty dumb, but uh, let's go ahead and throw it on real quick. Sweet. Uh, by the way, I ordered this from Speedway yesterday and it's already here. I friggin' love them so much. We had to do a little bit of adjustment, but I do not hate the way that looks. The motor is obviously greasy and filthy, but we're going to go ahead and clean all that up. But that's going to be on the next video or two videos from now. Obviously, performance is not the most important part of this car. We're just going for a low rider cool. So the fact that it's running 10 times better than it was when I bought it, very, very happy. I don't even know how long this video is going to be. I assume it's going to be two hours, an hour and a half. I don't know. Richard gets lazy and he starts, you know, cutting stuff down a lot shorter than it should be. Um, but if you are here watching this outro, thank you very much. I love you. Uh, that's awesome that you watched it this far. Do me a favor, comment a crown, you know, the crown emoji. And everybody that comments a crown, I will go ahead and respond to because I think it's awesome if you got all the way to the end. It's been a fun year. I'm super excited about 2023. I'm really happy we got to 100K, but some people thought that 100K meant we were quitting. Of course not. 100K subscribers is just a milestone everybody wants to reach, but you never stop there. We're just gonna keep growing and growing, and I'm gonna do that with the help of you guys, so thank you very much. Like I said earlier, comment below what your favorite build was in 2022, because I wanna see what people say. And uh, if you aren't already subscribed, hit that button now. Thank you very much for watching, and please like, share, comment, all the good stuff I tell you at the end of videos, and check out some more of my other videos. Peace, love ya.